Hello and welcome back to All Things Money. During this segment, we're going to continue our discussion about some brands that may disappear and why we think that's important. Maybe not the specific companies unless you're a user of those products, but why it's important from an investment perspective to not get lulled into complacency, into a, just a buy and hold sort of mentality, as well as to make you think to diversify your assets, don't concentrate all your money uh, in a couple of stocks. And these are some examples of some, some good brands that over the years people have flocked to for the high dividend yields and so forth, but that are probably going to go away. And we want to make sure that you're paying attention if you do own individual companies, that you're paying attention to what's going on with the companies and you don't just ride them down in, in, until bankruptcy. That with uh, in today's investing world, you know, is not to, to think that you can buy and hold a company for 30 years as a minority shareholder, you know, publicly traded company, it's very difficult um, to do, uh, especially if you're not paying close attention as these companies get into trouble. Uh, if you already own them, is one thing. If you're looking to buy, you know, companies, distressed companies, and sort of ride them up, you know, that can be one thing. If you buy a Bank of America, you know, at three dollars a share and it jumps to six, well, you, hey, you doubled your money, great. But if you owned it at sixty dollars a share and you rode it all the way down to three, that jump from three to six is not much consolation, honestly. Um, and so we don't advocate that you uh, that you ride things down like that. So we were talking about some brands that are in big trouble, uh, maybe not high profile, but brands that have been around for a while, name brands, high profile brands that may go away. Uh, Yum Brands, the, the three constituents, Taco Bell, KFC, and Pizza Hut, seem to do pretty well on their own, but the, the fact that there were this holding company, Yum, is probably holding them back. I'm hopeful that they will spin those out on their own and that they can stand on their own, but I'm not sure that uh, they were spun off of PepsiCo years ago, which was probably a good thing, but I'm not convinced that they need to stay under the Yum Brands uh, thing. The same thing with PPG, uh, formerly known as the Pittsburgh Plate and Glass Company. They make a lot of paint, industrial products, and things like that, including Lucite. Kind of like Yum Brands, their individual products are probably more famous and have more brand neck recognition than the company itself, PPG. And there is some shareholder value there that may be best served by uh, spinning those individual brands out. Um, Steelcase is a uh, office, uh, they manufacture office uh, furniture. Um, they make uh, very good products. If you've ever been in an office that had Steelcase products that are very good, uh, very sturdy, uh, they just have not been um, performing very well. The, the brand is just not very well known, um, and it's not contributing a lot to the value of, of the company itself. The last one, um, Key Corp, like, like all banks, it's just, you know, it's the favorite topic to sort of beat up on right now is the banking industry, and they their brand is just not well known. I mean, there's Key Bank, there's Key Corp, there's you know all these different things. Um, as a smaller regional bank, uh, you know probably will not uh, survive 2012. So we we'll, the the point of this show, I kind of tie these three things together. We talked about the fact that the U.S. is now a net exporter of gasoline for the first time in 60 years. We talked about the fact that the U.S. has actually reduced its gas consumption uh, the, due to fuel efficiency, for one thing, of cars. If you haven't looked at uh, cars recently, just your average regular gasoline engine car gets fantastic gas mileage compared to a, to a few years ago. We also talked about how in the oil industry, the Gulf of Mexico is emerging as a fantastic place to be drilling for oil right off our coast. It's close to our refineries, close to you know employing our people that can get out to the rigs quickly and get and get back. And then we went through and we talked about ten famous brands uh, among them like Kodak, Sears, Saab, um, PPG, Yum Brands. Some of these brands that either are financially in trouble or 
they're just not adding any value to the individual brands themselves that may go away. And so the point of all this is, number one, make sure that you're doing your research and that you're not just going off of, oh, the U.S. is, you know, the gas shortage, and that's why gas prices, the reason gas prices are high is because we can make more money exporting it overseas. And is there anything in your portfolio that you can do to take advantage of that? Or are you operating on the old assumption that the U.S. has to import a lot of its, its gas? The same thing with uh, the drillers. Um, the Gulf of Mexico is a fantastic place for oil. And is there anything in your portfolio that you're taking advantage of that with as well? And then finally, making sure that you don't go out and purchase the name brand, and I'll just pick on on Apple because they're the number, well, they trade places with Exxon, but periodically they're the number, the largest company on the U.S. stock exchange in terms of market cap. And I joke with people that there's only one direction to go once a company reaches that, and that's down. Uh, once a company becomes so large, there's really only one direction it has to go. I mean, it happened to GM. GM used to be the largest company. Microsoft used to be the largest company. Um, uh, AT&T, you know, some of these brands that now are just shadows of their former self. And so we would encourage you as you're investing, if you're trying to pick individual companies, to make sure that you stay abreast of what's going on with the companies. A lot of times we see people, they inherit these stocks that, you know, back in the 1960s or 70s, you know, their grandfather bought Kodak. Well, that was probably a great thing, and it served well for a number of years. But to just keep holding on to that because you're, it was from your grandfather or something and not paying attention to what's going on with the company is a severe, severe error that we see people make. That Things do change, and in the 21st century, things change a lot more rapidly than they did in the 1970s. And companies overnight, I mean, look what happened to Netflix you know, virtually overnight lost about 70% of its market value. And we see this happen with uh, scandals. In Netflix's case, it wasn't really a scandal. They just tried to tweak their product and pricing mix, and there's just sort of an uproar. Um, so there's a lot of risk today involved with buying and holding, even, even blue chip companies, uh, unless you're very well diversified. Okay, well, that's about all the time we have for today's show. I hope you've learned uh, something from today, which is uh, to, as Jim Cramer says, buy and do your homework. Don't just buy and forget. So we'll be back again next week, same time, same channel for all things money. I'm your host, David Blaine. You have a great week. The proceeding was a paid program. The opinions expressed are not necessarily those of WNBU and Interbanks Media.